Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're going to talk about my all-time favorite underwater photography technique, super macro. Super macro is when we have greater than one-to-one -one magnification of the, of the object on the camera sensor. Super macro photography opens up an entire new world within an already unique and amazing underwater world. With super macro photography, we can see what the ordinary eye cannot. We can see things that we can't even imagine. Super macro photography in is, is in many ways different from other types of underwater photographies. Now in some ways it's more challenging, which I will talk about in this introduction video, but in other ways it's actually easier, even technically and with regard to composition. All right. Um, now, some of the challenges. First, we do need some extra so-called specialty equipment. I would recommend an SLR camera, although I have seen some amazing photographs with a compact camera and various combinations of close-up lenses or diopters. We do need, in addition to a macro lens, a diopter or, or wet, um, close-up lens. This happens to be a 10 diopter subsea wet lens. We can also get a dry diopter to go over our, our macro lens. Or we can use something called the teleconverter. I will talk about this more in subsequent videos. Now with super macro photography also, we have to be really still. Us, our camera, our housing has to be still. We have to take our time and get really close to the subject. This means we, our sight selection is important. In general, we like shallow dives where we can take our time. We like to avoid current and surge. It's helpful to have a supportive understanding dive buddy. And we need to find subjects that are approachable and that at least at times are relatively still. Strobe positioning can be tricky, illuminating the subject so close to the dome port. And focus can be, is the most challenging. There is zero depth of field. We need precise focusing. And I will talk about that in subsequent videos, all right? Now, we have some advantages. Some of the advantages with super macro photography is there's almost always subjects available. We can take something mundane and make it stunning or beautiful. We have one thing to concentrate on, the subject, the focus, lighting, and composition of one thing. We don't have to worry about the big scene, the big picture, distractions of multiple subjects, the profile and orientation of more than one subject, the background, balancing the light and focus of both the foreground and the background, and distractions of multiple subjects like mergers of one subject into the other, or amputation of the foot or the fin or something like that. We have minimal, minimal uh, concerns about backscatter as well because there's so little water column. So even in poor visibility, we can sometimes get great shots with super macro, assuming we can find a subject. Now with super macro photography, we can truly be different. Instead of boring and conventional shots that we've all seen many times, we can let our imagination run, run wild as to what specific detail we want to capture. We can find a very small subject, or we can take a larger subject and just take a, a close-up of a small part of that subject. And we decide how we're going to compose it, how we're going to illuminate it, and exactly what we're going to focus on. So this set of super macro tutorials, we're going to talk about equipment. I'm going to have a couple of videos demonstrating working distance with various uh, close-up uh, lenses, wet and dry, and teleconverters. I'll have a video on technically how to do it. How do you set your ISO, your strobe positioning, your focusing, etc. Then we'll have a special video on composition considerations specific for how for super macro. And finally, I'm probably going to throw one or two videos in on how to shoot the aquatic eye, because I just think shooting the diverse uh, group of eyes of underwater vertebrates and invertebrates is just so cool. Remember, it's more about the photographer than the equipment. And it's not so much the photographer's pure skill and talent, but it's more patience, persistence, and some creativity, and sometimes dumb luck. So thanks so much for tuning in. I think this is going to be really fun. Thank you.